Hey, everybody, welcome to the Summer 2023 uh, series. Um, I thank you for being a part of this. Uh, my aim is, is really pretty clear, really pretty simple, and that is to, to let the Word of God speak into your life and form connections with other people in our church family. That, that's really what we're trying to do here. Um, when we look back at the early, early church, fellowship was one of those marked principles. We, we see that the church had life together. And so one of the, the goals in these type of groups are just to get to know people and get to know other people in our church family that you may not know well. And that's one of the goals. The other, the other objective is to study God's Word. And over the course of the next several weeks, we're going to look at four aspects of prayer in your life uh, for your own health, your own development, and then also for the health and life of the church. Did you know that, that whenever God moves, it is always on the backdrop of his people praying? And when his people pray, he manifests himself and he moves in their, in their midst. And we see that in the book of Acts, repeated several times. We see that in church history and when it comes to revivals, when before God moves, his people pray. And so I want to encourage you to be praying. The purpose of prayer, when John Stott tells us, is to not to bend God's will to ours, but to align our will with his. And so over the course of the next several weeks, uh, there are many things that you're asking. Lord, what is your will for me in this? What is your will for me in that? Um, and, and I just want to encourage you just to be voicing those things and asking the Lord, what is your will? And begin to pursue them. So let's look at a couple of things here. First of all, look at some research on prayer. In 2014, the Pew Research Center did a study surveying Americans and found that 55% of Americans say that they pray daily. So to kind of put that into some numbers, uh, if you have 20 people in a room, about 11 of them will say that they pray on a daily basis. Now, they dug a little bit deeper into that. Instead of just the broad category of Americans, they looked at, at different denominations and, and different pr uh, Christian practices and non-Christian practices. Um, so th what they found with evangelical Protestants, which is the category we fit into, is that evangelical Protestants pray 50, excuse me, 79 percent pray daily. So less than 80 percent of the people who said that I am an evangelical Protestant church, believe in the Bible, believe Jesus is the Son of God, believe he's returning, believe he raised from the dead, I pray about 79 percent. So again, put 10 people in a room about eight of them. Now, when you begin to compare that to other religions and non-Christian religions, and, and you'll find that there were two other groups that prayed more. One of them were the Jehovah's Witness, and the other was the Mormons. According to the study, 90% of Jehovah's Witnesses prayed 90% of the time every day. The study said 89% of Mormons prayed every single day. So, I say that to say that we need to be encouraged to be praying more often than some others. Now, here's another thing. And dig a little bit deeper in serving broad populace of Americans. Um, they found that 64% of men say they seldom or never prayed. 64%. Okay? So, again... Ten people in a room, ten guys in a room, six of them are never praying. It's an issue. Women, on the other hand, 59% of those said they prayed daily. So ten men, ten women, six and six. This is the problem. I say all this that to encourage us to our aim and our goal, and that is encourage you to pray. And encourage us to pray and present our request to the Father who hears and answers in this time. So today, what I want to focus on is a couple priorities of prayer that help to fuel our passion for prayer. Mark 135 says this, very early in the morning, the ne very early the next morning, long before daylight, Jesus got up and left the house. He went out of town to a lonely place where he prayed. See, prayer mattered enough to Jesus to get it before everyone else, to make his first activity of the day prayer, to go out where no one would disturb him and pray. 
Luke 5.16 tells us that this just wasn't a, a one-time occurrence. This was his habit. Luke 5.16 says, But Jesus often withdrew to the wilderness for prayer. So he, here's the point. If Jesus practiced the habit of praying, especially of praying undisturbed, don't you think that you and I should be praying? Ian e. Bounds, in his book, The Power of Prayer, says this, If God is not first in our thoughts and efforts in the morning, he will be in the last place of the remainder of the day. Now, I want to encourage you, make prayer your priority. Now, you may think, okay, I want to pray, but I'm not sure how to pray. Here, I've got good news for you. Prayer can be taught. In Luke chapter 11, verse 1, the disciples come to Jesus. It says this, Now, Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. A little comparison. He then begins to teach them how to pray in what we call the Lord's Prayer. And here's the encouragement. If they asked Jesus how to pray and they were spending time with Jesus, that means if you don't know how to pray, you're in really good company. That also means that prayer can be taught. And there are all sorts of ways to practice praying. And at the end of this session, I want to give you an acronym to help you do that. Thirdly, prayer is a habit. Colossians 4 verse 2 says this, Continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. Continue. That means keep going. Be in that habit, that regular practice of praying. Jesus demonstrated that habit early in the morning. You may That's a great time. I would encourage you to, to do that and adopt that into your own life. But the point being, a prayer in your life just needs to be a habit. What matters to us becomes a habit in our lives. I would encourage you to develop the habit of prayer. Prayer also produces a peace in your life. Look, look at Philippians 4, verses 6 through 7. I love this verse, this set of verses. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. And his peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Quite simply, prayer produces peace in your life. When you, you have things on your heart and things in your mind, things that are causing you to worry, the, the text here is trying to guilt you into not worry or guilt you when you do worry. The text here is saying that when you're worrying, give that stuff to God. Tell him what's going on. Thank him for what he's done. And then he promises to fill your heart and guard your heart and guard your mind with his peace. Prayer is also all-encompassing. Look at verse six, verse 18 in Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians 6, verse 18. Pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. There's a couple ways in this passage where prayer is all-encompassing. First, it's encompassing in time. Pray at all times. There is not a time when you cannot pray. There is not a time when you should not pray. When someone says, well, I don't know what else to do, but pray. Pray. Uh, we, we need to be praying at all times for all things in every occasion. So it, prayer is all-encompassing in time. Prayer is all-encompassing in occasions. There is nothing that happens in your life, good, bad, indifferent, which you cannot pray about. Whether that's thanking the Lord for what he's done, whether it's asking God to intervene in something, whether it's just saying, God, I don't know what to do about this thing. All-encompassing in time, all-encompassing in occasion. Prayer is also all-encompassing with um believers everywhere. Prayer has no borders, if you will. Pray for believers everywhere. Persistently praying for believers. I hope that you have people in your life that you're just praying for. That they may never know. But you keep them on a list and you're just, you're praying. Hey, I'm praying for this. And then in my own life, I have certain days that I'm praying for certain things and certain people. And, and I want to encourage you as we are praying for believers around the world as they are falling after Christ, praying for local, state, and around the world. All right, lots of other principles on prayer. 
But the aim today is to help you have a priority and a passion for prayer because you, you need to protect your heart and mind. You need to pray for everyone everywhere. You have prayer that itself can be taught. Prayer is a habit. And Jesus' own priority was to get away and to pray. Okay, well, how do you do that? How, how, do, you, how do you pray? Maybe you're one of the, like the 12. I don't know how to pray. I want to pray, but I don't know how. Let me, let me look here at this acronym, PRAY, from a gentleman named Pete Grigg. Uh, this is on the, posted on the Navigator's website, and those are really helpful. First of all, he says in prayer, we need to pause. Looking at, looking at the Lord prayer, Jesus said, when you pray, to, we, to start, we must stop. To move forward, we must pause. This is the first step. Put down your wish list and wait. Be still, be quiet, know that I'm God. When you come to your time of prayer, into that habit, step into it and say, okay, Lord, I just want to pause, and I want to come before your presence, and I want to hear from your voice, and I'm going to just get my heart and mind in the right place to pray. Pray. Um, pause, rather. Um, second thing is rejoice. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. The Lord's Prayer begins with an invitation to adoration. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Having paused to be still at the starting of a prayer time, the most natural and appropriate response to God's presence <coughs> excuse me, is reverence. Lord, I thank you for who you are. I'm so thankful for who you are, for all you've done. I'm so thankful for how you've answered my prayer. I'm so thankful for how you provided for me. I'm so amazed at, at who you are. Pause, rejoice. Then ask, your kingdom come, your will be done. Give us today our daily bread. Prayer means many things to many people, but at, at its simplest and most immediate, it means asking God for help, a soldier begging for courage, a mother alone in a hospital chapel. We come to the Lord and say, Lord, this is what I need. This is what's happening. I'm rejoicing for how you answer my prayer. Here's what's going on. But I know that you will answer in your time and your way. We ask him. I want to encourage you as you pray together. Ask the Lord for thanks. Be big and bold in your prayer. Finally, yield. Why? Yield. P-R-A-M-Y. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The final prayer, the final dance of prayer is surrender. It's a clenched fist slowly opening. It, it's the athlete lowering themselves into the ice bath. It's the, the California poppies turning with the sun. God, here's my life. I'm going to live open-handed, not closed fist. I give myself to you. Have your way in me today. Prayer must be a priority in your life because prayer if, if prayer is not a priority in our lives, it will not be a priority in our church, and then we will not see God move the way that he wants to do. Not because he can't, but because we've become the barricade. Pray. Let me encourage you here as you draw this, this study to a this video to close. Take some time in your group to pray for each other and, and things that are happening in your life. Take some of those scriptures and, and claim them as promises. Jesus, you said you'd teach us how to pray. Teach us how to pray. Uh, Jesus, you promised to guard our hearts and minds. Guard our hearts and minds. Look over those scripture passages. Reflect upon them between now and next meeting's time. Maybe even commit one of them to memory. And then lastly, let me encourage you this. In, in the course of this summer, either like on a, like a note card or in a journal or just a plain piece of paper and a legal pad, write down your prayer request. And let's see God do and answer, move and answer in only with the way that he can. Thank you for watching.